Thank you, Rick. Okay, so a lot of great information shared by the panel, detailed information that you need to know. And we'd like to know, we've taken about half the time for this meeting, and we'd like to move into our question and answer session with you. So let's get started. If you raise your hand, I'll call, I can call on you, and then, and then we'll take it from there. Okay, right up, here, up front. Did we ever figure out how it started? Did we ever figure out how it started? Well, we figure it's human caused, but, but that's all we know. You know, you know, there was no lightning, lightning uh, within the area. Um, so so um, we, have, we have looked at the site and there is like, like an investigation in progress. So that's all we know at this point. Right here in the yellow. Uh, excluding Avila, approximately how many residences or homes are at risk within the confines on your map? Excluding Havila, how many residents, residences are represented within the confines of the entire map or just the area that was just evacuated? The, uh, the red line area. The red line just around this whole area? Potentially affected by the fire. Are at risk inside that, the red line area? The red line, everything inside the red line is already burned. There were structures in some of the French Meadow, Clareville. Those are the areas that we've been actively fighting fire, Thompson Canyon. So the red is the perimeter of the fire. All of that area has been burned through now. Um, we haven't done any mop up or anything like that. Uh, we've been working to contain and control the fire right now. So number of structures, I, I don't have the exact numbers. We've been really working on trying to contain the fire right now. Fire is on the inside of this perimeter for the most part. Yes. I have two uh, things I'd like to share with you. One is I am inviting everybody, when you see fire personnel, volunteers, sheriffs, or whatever, Give them the I love you sign. This is the sign language, okay? Let them know that we love them for all they're doing and putting their lives on the line. The other thing is we can use this incident. If we get the schools and the churches to uh, get a map and put a, draw a yellow line to do sections, then they get the kids to volunteer and they go out there and look and they can become spotters and then they can call if there's a number that they can call to let people know where they see a plume of smoke or whatever. Let's use the schools and churches to help the firemen and the volunteers put this thing out. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next. In the back here, in the blue. Uh, I own uh, a house in Valley View there, when you guys are pointing north. I'd like to know how close it is to that, because when you're looking up from bonds, which is where you can see that's where our, my house is up there. I'd like to know, I mean, there's smoke. There's, I'd like to know, is that smoke or is that a fire or what? Okay, so she has a home in Valley View and she's wondering exactly how close the fire is to that. Um, she can see it from Vaughn and it's got her concern. So I'm not exactly clear, clear where your house is, but Valley View s sits here, okay? I would say the fire right now is probably, from the latest intel, is about here. So I, I would say roughly a mile away. When you're looking up the line and the down slope of it, I mean, there's nothing but smoke and just, it, I don't know if it's flames or what it is, but that is the backyard to my, my home there. And I'd like to know, is that smoke or what's going on right there? Yeah, it, it, you know. You know, the fire is, is close. One mile is very close. So yes, it's there. It's, it's, yeah. It, how, however, you know, you know, we have been working this. I mean, it's, you know, it's not just running. We're dropping retardant on it. The helicopters are on it. And we'll have ground, ground troops, troops on it, on it this evening and in the morning. Okay, back here. Yes, I'd like to know. We've, we've had a weather change uh, from yesterday to today. Uh, what's our weather going to be like in the, in the next three or four days? Is that going to have an influence 
on the people in the valley below the, the Paiute Range. Okay, so we've had a weather change, and she's wondering in the next few days if the weather is going to have an influence in the valleys? In, in our valley, which she's talking about, Valley View, in Valley Lake, um, the Weldon area. And the Weldon area, okay. Um, so the weather um, is, um, for tomorrow, it's similar to what we had, had this afternoon. Um, um, we expect the southeasterly winds once again, and, you know, talking with the meteorologist that, um, that is here, um, he was saying that these winds may, may turn back to the south, southwesterly later, later tomorrow afternoon, which is what we want. In terms of the weather throughout the week, it's going to be hotter, hotter and drier, and we'll have winds. And believe me, the weather dictates how successful we are. Um, this afternoon, noon, the weather and the fire won. Okay, yesterday we won. So, so, so the weather is a huge, it's a huge factor, you know, that we watch all the time. Uh, so. Okay, in the back in the white. Mm -hmm. How far is the fire from the Squirrel Valley area? Okay, you can see it through the saddle right on the peak. Squirrel Valley is right up in here. The fire on the top end uh, did make a significant run today, probably gained a mile in ground. Uh, it's in uh, heavier fuels. Uh, we do. Uh, we're trying to put some control lines in to stop the fire using dozers and hand crews. Uh, we did pull out when the fire did make the significant push this afternoon because our number one thing is firefighter safety when we're operating on this. We needed to let the fire do its thing and uh, once it settles down tonight we'll be back in there trying to control the fire. Okay, 